All right, today I want to talk about um, evaluating limits analytically, like by looking at the equation of a function. I'm referring to something like this. What is, say, limit as x approaches 3 of uh, x squared minus 2x plus 6, all right? Here's the general rule for these sorts of things. General rule. You plug the number in by the number. I'm referring to this 3 right here. I want to know what are the values of this when x is close to 3. Well, that's, you know, usually that's going to just be the same as whatever the value is when x actually is 3. So you plug the number in, and then I'm going to say this is slightly informal, but it, it works most of the time. Um, if nothing weird happens, this is the limit. So what I mean by that is, right in this example right here, I'm just going to plug the 3 in, and you get 3 squared minus 2 times 3 plus 6, which is, that's 9 minus 6 plus 6 is 9. And that's your answer, right? That uh, it turns out to be the correct answer. That is the limit of this function as x approaches 3. This doesn't always work, but when it does work, I mean, that is to say, when you plug it in and you actually get some number, then that is the limit of the function that you're talking about, okay? Um, well, how could this fail to work? Uh, you should ask yourself, what could possibly go wrong when you're doing this? Well, there are a few things that could go wrong. What could go wrong? Uh, here's, here's one that there's something uh, a little weird happens, right? How about this? Limit as x goes to 2. x plus 3 divided by x minus 2. All right? In the spirit of uh, just plug it in, what should we do? Just plug it in. That is, you plug in 2 for x over here. What do you get? You get, uh, so I'm going to plug in, that says plug, x equal 2. What do you get up here? You get 2 plus 3 divided by 2 minus 2, which is 5 divided by 0. Anything wrong with that? Uh, yes, there is something wrong with that. Dividing by 0 is not allowed. There's no such thing as dividing by 0. So this is bogus for some reason. You have to um, you have to figure out what's supposed to happen in this case. Well, actually it's not so hard to figure this out and there's a general rule for this. So this is a, a rule which you should, you know, I suppose memorize, although it's not hard to remember this. If you uh, plug in and get something like uh, a constant over zero, which is what happened here, where the thing on the top is not zero. That's what happened here. Five over zero or, you know, eight over zero, whatever. Something just not a zero on the top over zero. Then, here's what happens. Uh, the limit does not exist. That's because what it means when you get something like five over zero is, is your function is behaving at near that point. It means your function is behaving something like this function f of x equal 5 over x, where you're trying to flug, um, flug 0 into the denominator. It's a flug. Uh, what does 5 over x look like, though, near 0? It looks like this, right? It looks just like 1 over x, only it's multiplied by 5. Okay, And this function here has no limit when x is 0. Okay, So um, if you get a 0 on the denominator but something else on the top, then you just say the limit does not exist. And that's all there is to it. Okay, what else could happen? Well, if you were looking carefully at what I said there, I said something divided by zero, where the thing on top is not zero, you can immediately say the limit does not exist. But what if uh, they're actually both zero? So if you get zero divided by zero after you plug in, actually in this case, you cannot just say the limit does not exist. Um, this uh, actually has a special name. Well, let me just finish my sentence here. If you get 0 over 0, this tells you nothing about the limit. All right? It may be that the limit does not exist. It may also be that the limit does exist and equals, you know, some, some number, right? Actually, this doesn't say... Um, anything and you have to do some more work when this happens. This is kind of the, the worst case because um, not only you don't know the answer, you have to do more steps to figure it out. All right. In such a situation, you should go back, simplify more, 
and then try to plug in again. All right, that's what you have to do. Right, let's try the limit as h goes to zero, h plus three squared minus nine divided by h. How do you like that? I'm using h instead of x. Uh, this is, you know, in keeping with most uh, math textbooks. They, uh, they just decide to change the names of the variables um, at random for no, no apparent reason. That's cool. You sh I mean, it doesn't matter what you call the thing anyway. Okay, how do you begin such a problem? You should always start by just try to plug it in, right? So I'm going to try to plug in h equals 0. And what do you get? Upstairs, you get 0 plus 3 squared minus 9 divided by 0, right? I plugged 0 in everywhere for h and um, I have a zero on the bottom so something uh, something fishy is going on here what about on the top well zero plus three is three so this is three squared minus nine divided by zero what is three squared that's nine nine minus nine is zero so actually I get zero over zero this is the scenario that I was just referring to what do you do if you get zero over zero you've got to go back and try to simplify after hopefully simplifying some stuff, then you try to plug in again. So that's what we're going to do. So this stuff, I mean, it's important that you do this, but it's sort of irrelevant for the rest of the problem because we're going to start over again and try to simplify. What can you do to simplify that right there? You should try to cancel out whatever you can, although there's nothing really that you can cancel um, immediately as written here. What you can do, though, is um, expand this thing. You do like the foil, right? I mean, you, you multiply out h plus 3 squared would be h plus 3 times h plus 3, right? And you get something or other. You get h squared on the front. On the inside, you get 3h. On the outside, you get 3h. That's, that's the thing I'm talking about. So let's do that right here. This whole limit is... All right, it's still... I'm not doing the limit yet, right? I'm just simplifying this over here. Eventually, I'm going to take the limit by plugging in, but um, I'm not ready for that yet because this is what happens if you try it at this point. Uh, I'm going to replace h plus 3 squared by the results of this FOIL, which will be h squared plus 3h. That's the outside term. Plus the inside term is 3h. Plus 3 times 3 is 9, right? And then, okay, that was just this part. Now I have minus 9 still there. And all divided by h, all right? Uh, having done that, can we simplify anything in there? Well, the 3h and the 3h can combine. Give me 6h. Put that down here. Uh, okay, the h squared actually can't combine with anything else, so I'm going to leave the h squared. Like I said, these I'm going to turn into plus 6h. How about the 9 and the 9? They cancel, right? So this is plus 0. I, I'm not going to write that. Divided by h like so. All right. Now, what can we do? Well, uh, we basically want to cancel out h in the fraction here. The appropriate way to do this is on the top. I'm going to factor out h, so it says lim h goes to 0, h times, what do you get when you factor the h out here? You get h squared, you pull the h out, you get another h, right? One h left over, there used to be two here. And then over here, plus 6h, just turns into plus 6 because I'm pulling the h out. And on the bottom, h. All right, almost done here, but I'm out of room. Give me a moment. All right, what will it be? How can you simplify here? Okay, now that the h is factored out, I can really straight up cancel those guys, and we get lem h goes to zero. Uh, all that's left is h plus six, okay? Now, you can't simplify that anymore, but uh, so what? remember what we were doing here. We got zero over zero at the beginning, so we had to go back, simplify, and then plug in the h again, and hopefully it'll work this time, and it will work this time. I'm gonna plug in h equals zero here, and you get 0 plus 6, which is 6. And that's the answer. The answer is 6. All right. Notice I wrote this lim h goes to 0 every single time. That's because this is an operation, right? It says uh, I'm going to somehow figure out what this value approaches when h goes to 0. And you should be writing it every time until the very end when you plug it in. Now this is actually the value of the limit, right? So some people, I don't know why, but there's some limb haters out there who just, they don't like to write this. This is a real operation, and so you should write it in your equations uh, every time, all right?
is my answer six. All right, let's try uh, just a couple more examples here. How about this one? Limit as x goes to negative three of x squared plus five x minus six over, sorry, I meant plus six up there, over x squared plus six x plus nine. All right. Let's do it. Uh, as we did before, you know, the first thing you should try is just plug this number in here. If you get a real number as the answer, then that's the answer and, you know, back away slowly, right? You're done at that point. But let's uh, let's try it. So I'm going to plug in minus 3. It's going to, I'm plugging in everywhere for x here. Minus 3 squared plus 5 times minus 3 plus 6 divided by, by minus 9. Plus 9, minus nine, plus nine right? What is that? Is, oh, are you shocked? Zero again. Zero over zero. That means... I gotta go back and uh, do some more work. Here's a little uh, little secret that I'll let you in on. Most of the examples that we're gonna do in our class will give you a zero over zero. That's because uh, any other example is is kind of easy, right? You plug it in, whatever that is, is the answer. I wanna make you work for it a little. So I'm usually gonna make it zero over zero. That's not a promise, you know. Sometimes I'll, just to uh, change it up a little bit, I might not do that, but. You shouldn't be surprised if this happens, okay? What ha what do you do when you get zero over zero? It means you gotta go back, simplify some business, and then plug in again. So let's do it. What are you gonna do to simplify that thing up here? Now, in the previous example, we did a, a, a foil thing. There's no uh, opportunity for that, but you can do kind of the opposite of the foil, which is factoring, right? This is something I hope you're, uh, I hope you're into factoring because it's actually gonna be really important in um, most of the uh, you know most of the stuff that we're going to do uh, with this business, so I'm going to factor here. So uh, it's still the limit. I'm not doing the limit in this step, of course. Um, you got to factor on the top and also on the bottom. Any master factors out there? What are the factors of x squared plus five x plus six? Um, you know, I'm I'm referring to this thing where you go. Okay, x and then uh, x here plus something plus something. Right, that's what I want. You need to choose these two numbers so that their product is 6 and their sum is 5. And the answer is a 2 and a 3, right? x plus 2, x plus 3. If you're not into this, uh, get into it. Um, you know, this is a really important thing for us. So um, uh, you might want to do some review on that note. Okay, and what about down here? Down here, it's actually, if you think about it, x plus 3 and x plus 3, right? The 3 and the 3, they need to multiply to be 9 and add to be 6. And... So the three and the three is what you want. Okay, what what can you do now? Now that you've factored, you see actually the x plus three can cancel on the top and on the bottom. Isn't that nice? I think so. So what it boils down to is this. Limit x goes to minus three of x plus two divided by x plus three. And I have simple, that's quite a bit simpler than what we started with. So let's try to plug it in again, right? Remember the basic strategy. I go back, simplify, and then try to plug in again, see if it's any better. Let's plug it in again. Um, when I plug this in, I get minus 3 plus 2. I'm plugging in minus 3 for x. Minus 3 plus 3, which is negative 1 over 0. And what do you say with that? This is not an actual number, right? But remember, when you get this after plugging in to find the limit, if you get something over 0 and the thing on top is not 0, that means the limit does not exist. So you say, so the limit does not exist. The end. All right. All right, one last example. Um, we're going to see this uh, fairly often, actually, over the next uh, couple of times. Um, sometimes you're going to have, like, extra variables inside of your uh, formula that you're taking the limit of. Here's, here's an example of that. All right, there we go. Uh, this, what I said was, this is an example of sometimes you have just an extra variable that's just thrown in there. What, what do you do with the x while you're trying to take the limit with the h? Here's what you do. You leave the x. And, you know, it'll be in the answer, all right? x will appear in the answer. So you don't really do anything special. All right? I mean, you might feel a little weird about it, but there's, there's, no, uh, there's no problem. It's kind of a pain that you won't be able to say exactly what that thing as a number is. You just got to leave it as an x, and your answer is going to have an x in it. That's, that's what's going to happen. All right, let's do it. Um, as usual, we're going to start off by trying to simplify here because this is a complicated thing. Actually, you could just try to plug in the h equals 0, 
Would you mind if I just talk it through? What happens? Well, you get zero on the bottom, all right? What happens if you plug h equals zero on the top? You get, you're gonna end up with two x plus zero, so it's really two x squared, but two x squared is actually four x, two x to the whole thing squared, right? The parentheses are important. Two x the whole thing squared is the same as four x squared, so you're gonna get zero on the top and zero on the bottom because h is zero. Uh, so you're gonna have to go back and uh, simplify rather than trying to plug in immediately. How do we simplify? This actually looks similar to the first one we did, so uh, we're just gonna do the FOIL thing right there, all right? So it's still limit, h goes to zero, because I'm not doing the limit yet, I'm just simplifying. Uh, and on top, we're gonna do the FOIL here. This, you know, you could work this out on the side if you want, 2x plus h times 2x plus h, right? On the front, you get 2x times 2x, which is 4x squared. On the inside, you get h times 2x, so that's plus, uh, 2xh. On the outside, you also get 2xh. And on the end, you get h and h. So that's plus h squared, right? Okay, uh, I also have this from before. So all that is from that part. We also have minus 4x squared from before. And then on the bottom, h. All right? Don't, uh, don't confuse yourself over here. Okay. All right, let's keep going. Try and uh, cancel or whatever. What Can you cancel or combine anything up here? I think you can. The 4x squared and the 4x squared can straight up cancel, right? Because I got a positive 4x squared, a minus 4x squared. What else can you do? I can uh, combine the 2xh and the 2xh. That would be a 4xh. And then this plus h squared, you can't really do much with that. Divided by h. All right. Now what? Uh, now everything on top has a h as a factor, right? 4xh and the h squared, so I can factor out h on the top. This is a pattern that you will recognize as we go on with doing these limits. They typically will end by you factoring something out on the top and then canceling it on the bottom. Um, four, sorry, I'm factoring out the h. So it's like this h times what's left when you pull the h out? 4x here and h here. 4x plus h, like so. On the bottom, h. Now we cancel the h's. What do you say? 4x plus h, right? That's what's left over. So lim h goes to 0. 4x plus h. Now, finally, we can take the limit by plugging the h equals 0. And nothing bad happens. You just get 4x plus 0, which is 4x. And that right there is the answer. All right? Are you nervous that there's an x in the answer? Don't worry about it. Remember I said you just leave the X in there and the X will appear in the answer. That's how we do it. All right, one more type of limit that I want to talk about is limits at infinity. All right, this is something that we didn't talk about on graphs, although this is a thing that you can talk about on graphs. So let me just, here's an example. Um, something like this. Let's say I have a function that looks like that, where this is a horizontal asymptote, all right? If you have this kind of a situation, you say the limit as x approaches infinity, let's call this f of x, of f of x, in this case, equals two. I'm asking you, so what that means is, it means f of x has a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2 um, as x increases, right? Horizontal asymptote when the x is going this way in the increasing direction. Okay, that's what it means to say limit as x goes to infinity. It's easy to identify on the picture what the limit as x goes to infinity is, or as x goes to minus infinity means that the uh, asymptote is experienced when the x is going backwards. And also these limits can fail to exist. Like in this case here, the limit as x goes to infinity is 2, but the limit as x goes to negative infinity of f of x, in this case, does not exist. That's because as we go this way, there is no particular y value that this function approaches in a horizontal asymptote. All right, So this limit does not exist. That's because there's no horizontal tote on the left. Right? So when you're going to negative infinity, which is that way, um, there is no horizontal asymptote. 
All right, what about looking at equations? This is a more interesting thing. Looking at the picture is pretty easy. All right, consider this. What if I give you an equation and I ask you, what is the limit as x goes to whatever? All right, um, in equations, how do you do this? Where you don't necessarily know what the picture looks like, so you can't just look for horizontal asymptotes, which is easy to do if you know what the picture is. What about if you don't? Here's two simple facts. Simple facts. The limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x to the power n, say, where this, if this n is a positive number, so I'm talking about something like 1 over x squared or 1 over x cubed or whatever, right? Uh, this equals 0. If you don't believe me, you can try to draw a graph of one of those kinds of things, 1 over x squared or 1 over x to the 1 power even. You know, 1 over x looks like this, right? In fact, they all look like this, at least on this side. Some of them are, are always positive. Some of them have this side being negative. But it doesn't matter. In any case, every function like 1 over x to some power, as long as that's a positive number, um, it approaches 0 as a horizontal asymptote when you go out to the right. That's, that's all I'm saying right here. And it's also true in the other direction. I said sometimes these things look like that. If the power is even here, it'll look like this. If the power is odd, then instead the, the thing will be on the bottom. But in, in either case... When the x goes this way, to negative infinity, the limit is also zero. So here's my, sub, my second, you know, simple fact here. Limit as x goes to minus infinity, 1 over x to the n, is also equal to zero. Okay, so this is for any n greater than zero. This exponent has to be positive because the negative exponent actually refers to a reciprocal. So if you see a negative exponent in the bottom, that actually means it's a positive exponent in the top. But I don't know. I don't want to get into that. I'm not going to try to trip you up by doing stuff like that, all right? This is true for any n greater than zero. So you can do some tricks here with limits. How about this? Limit as x goes to infinity of 3 over x. How about this? 3 over x squared minus 2 over x plus 6, all right? Because of what I just said, this part here and this part here uh, you kind of know what the limit has to be, right? The limit of anything that looks like 1 over x to some power is always 0. If you want to make this look like that, you can rewrite it like this. This is the same as the limit of 3 times 1 over x squared plus, or I should maybe say minus 2 times 1 over x plus 6, right? And then I already know that this part here, the limit equals zero, and also this part here, the limit equals zero. So you can do the limit and you get three times zero, minus two times zero. That's because this part is zero. This part is also zero when you do the limit. And then plus six. So what's my answer? Zero, zero, plus six. So the answer is six. All right, let's try some more. All right, how about this guy? Limit as x goes to infinity, x squared plus 7 divided by x to the 5 minus x. The strategy that you should do in, when you're trying to do this is divide by the biggest power of x you see. So I'm going to divide by x to the fifth, all right? Let's try it out, just like before. Lim x goes to infinity. Okay, on top I get x squared over x to the 5 plus 7 over x to the 5 divided by x to the 5 over x to the 5 minus x over x to the 5. Okay, let's simplify a little bit. What do you get here? I'm not going to do the limit yet. Uh, x squared over x to the 5. Do you remember how to do one of those guys? Exponents in fractions like this, you subtract the exponents. Uh, so um, all the x squareds are going to cancel here. And what you remain, uh, what what's left over on the bottom is x cubed, right? Uh, here, uh, I'm just going to leave it like that, 7 over x to the 5. Down here, this here is 1, this here is 1 over x to the 5, right? No, x to the 4, right? Because i got to cancel one of the x's and there's 4 left over. Okay, what do you do when you take the limit here? Well, it's the same thing, right? Everything which has x's on the bottom becomes 0 and everything else just stays like it is. So when I do the limit, actually, I get 0 plus 0 divided by 1 minus 0. And what is that? 0 divided by 1. Is that anything? Uh, yeah, that equals 0. 
you know, you're not allowed to divide by zero. You can't have zero on the bottom, but you, you definitely can have zero on the top. It's just zero. Okay, so this limit is zero. Let's let's try and um, let's try and be a little a little cute about this. Let's be a little smart about this. Um, I think actually, think about what what could you change here. What if I change this around a little bit? How is that going to affect the answer? For example, if this seven was an eight instead, does that matter? Uh, no, it doesn't because you just make that an eight here, eight here. But this is going to turn into zero anyway, right? Um, in fact, everything here is going to turn to zero and give you zero over one. I think really the only thing that matters is when you do this thing, divide out by x to the five, you didn't cancel out all the x's, right? There still remain x's on the bottom of everything on the uh, top. If you think about it, what this means, there's a there's a nice uh, little rule for this, which is uh, very simple to understand, but takes a while to write down. I'll write it down. All right, here's the sweet trick for doing these limits as x goes to infinity. So in a fraction like this, limit as x goes to infinity, f of x over g of x for uh, polynomials. f and g, right? The thing on the top and the bottom have to be polynomials in order for this, in order for this trick to work. But here's, here's the trick. We just saw the first part of this trick is if g has a higher degree, remember the degree of a polynomial is just the highest um, exponent that happens, right? The one we just did had an x to the 5 on the bottom, but only an x squared on the top, right? That means that when you divide everything out, you're going to kill off everything on the top. Everything off on the top is going to become zero when you do the limit. So if g has a higher degree, then the limit is zero. All right? You can just say immediately, it will always work out this way. If the degree of the thing on the bottom is bigger than the one on the top, the limit is zero. All right? We're going to talk about two other scenarios, right? One would be if the f is bigger than the g, and the other would be if they are equal. So uh, leave a little leave a little space here. We'll come back to this, but uh, that's what's in our future, all right? Okay, let's try one where the degree of the thing on the top is bigger. How about limit as x goes to infinity of uh, 8x squared minus 7 divided by x plus 4, right? On the top, I have a degree 2. On the bottom, I have a degree 1. What are you going to do? Well, we're going to do the same trick like we did before. Divide everything out by the highest power of x, which you see, which is x squared. So, x happens, squared, you just look through here, by. and here, they're all going to be 0. You get 8 divided by 0, so you say limit does not exist. All right? Again, there's very little about this original thing here, which is relevant in getting this answer. You could change this thing around. Um, all those numbers, the 8, the 7, the 4, they, they are irrelevant. The only thing that mattered was that the degree on the top was bigger than the degree on the bottom. That's what ensures you that everything on the bottom is going to turn to 0, whereas something on the top will not turn to 0 at the end. All right, So we can fill in the second uh, thing on our little uh, sweet trick. So what we just saw was when you have a higher degree on top, so if f has a higher degree, then limit does not exist. All right? Great. Okay, one last scenario. That is when the top and the bottom have equal degrees. Let's try this. 3x to the 5 minus 7x squared divided by 4x to the 5 plus x. How about that? All right? They have equal, both have degree 5, okay? I'm going to do the same trick as always, which is you divide out by the highest power of x that you see. In this case, it would be x to the 5, so this 7 infinity, over uh, x goes from x to this the 3 plus 0, you get 3 over 4. All right, so when the degrees of the top and the bottom are equal, you actually get some answer which is not 0, and you don't say the limit does not exist. You get uh, an ordinary looking number, usually going to be a fraction. Can you identify where this came from in the original formula? I think you can. The 3 and the 4 are the coefficients of the highest degree term. Uh, up there. All right. So that's our third part of the trick. So the last case is if f and g have the same degree, then the limit is the ratio of coefficients. 
sorry, I'm running out of room here, the ratio of the coefficients on the highest degree terms, all right? In any case, either of these three options, you can say the answer immediately. It's very easy once you know the trick here to say what the answer is right away. And you know, when you're, when you're doing this stuff in class, I don't expect you to work out a whole bunch of details. You just tell me the answer right away because you remember the trick. All right, I hope you agree with me about how, uh, how awesome this trick is. I didn't, I didn't write it down before, but the, the exact same rules work when it's x going to minus infinity. It doesn't matter if it's plus or minus infinity. Anyway, you can do um, any example like this more or less immediately. I'm just going to write a few here. All right, what are the answers? You don't have to uh, think really about this at all. You can just look at the formulas and say the answers immediately. Here, the degree on the bottom is bigger, so the answer is zero. Here, the degree on the, well, what, what about the degrees here? I'm actually being a little tricky here. The degrees are equal. I didn't write them right on top of each other, but the degrees are equal here, so the answer is the ratio of the coefficients on the highest degree terms. That would be this and this. What's the coefficient here? Uh, it's a one, it's a sort of invisible one. So the answer here is negative seven, all right? How about this one? Uh, again, the degrees are equal here. They're both degree seven, so the ratio of those coefficients is six over four. There you go. Uh, you know, once you know the trick, you can uh, say the answer immediately. Pretty good, huh?